This video is brought to you by Squarespace, but we are going to talk about that later. In this video, I'm going to teach you how to do shape matching, which seems stupid, but it's not trivial. Here, this is paper. I tried to calculate the gradient descent, couldn't do it. By the way, this is something that is super useful in physics simulations, because even if it compresses or whatever, you can recover it. And you have a shape, and here you have the same shape, but moved and rotated. Most importantly, you're going to see that these vertices basically line up in the sense that they have like matching indices. So let's say this is one, two, three. We can map this to one, two, three. What that tells me is the way we get from here to here is we first of all move it and then we rotate it. This triangle has a center of mass, kind of like the average of all these vertices. So to here, the first step is to move the center of mass to the other. When we do that, we get something that looks like that. Yes, a Star of David is what we're going for. And now that these are matching, all we have to do is kind of add a rotation. Obviously, that rotation is in this direction to match all the points. So not only are we doing this in 3D, but we're going to need to handle shapes that have also kind of deformed. Like when this uh, cube fell, it kind of flattened for some reason. In a case like this, again, we move the center of masses, nothing changed there. And we know we need a rotate it this way, but because this shape has deformed, there is no perfect rotation, and trying to align like the fours, for example, is going to mess up the threes, and what you have to do is find the best rotation, the best that you can, that will fit the shape. Therefore, shape matching. So here's cylinder one and cylinder two, I'm going to move and rotate. So what we need to do is find the transformation that goes from here to here, and we're not going to use any of this information to do that, because that would be cheating, and normally we have deformation, so it's not that easy. So to calculate the center of mass, all I need to do is take the geometry, and I take the position of every single vertex, and then I look at the mean, and that's going to be for any geometry. In fact, what I can do now is I can also input using relative the second cylinder. And for that target, I can find the center of mass. Now to move shape one to shape two, let's think about it. We have this vector going from one to the other. We take center of mass from this one and subtract that one and offset it. In other words, I take this, I subtract, connect that here, and we can do this as easily as a transform geometry because it's one solid rigid motion. Now we need an algorithm for this kind of rotation thing. And there is a answer to this. It's called SVD, I think, uh, single value decomposition. Blender is not ready for that. It only handles four by four matrices and it's also complicated. So I want you to imagine that this is index one and this is index one. So what I want to do is kind of rotate this way to match the shapes. So here is going to be the angle that we have to rotate it by. We'll call that beta, but we also know the axis that we need to rotate it by. And that is going to be perpendicular uh, to those two. We're not just going to do it for that point. We're going to do it for every single point and then average them. I'm going to take the target and I want to sample the geometry. Particularly, I can sample the index just directly because they have the exact same indices, right? I want to sample a vector. That vector is going to be position. If I have two points and a center of mass, we can find that angle by first of all getting these two vectors from this first one to the center of mass and so too with this one. So I'm going to take the target center of mass where we moved it to and I'm going to subtract the target position and vector two is going to be the same thing, the original position without sample index. So we have this vector, we have this vector, let's calculate the angle in between. If you don't know, there's a good little function for this. You want to make sure both your vectors are normalized so they are of unit length and you can take these and compute something that is called the dot product. Basically what this gives you when these are normalized is the cosine of the angle. So to get the angle, you just undo that cosine with an arc cosine. The second thing we want to do is we want to find the axis of rotation, which is perpendicular, right? Because we rotate about to that. So instead of dot product, you take something called the cross product. Of course, we need to average them, but let's just kind of see what this looks like. So I'm going to recast this position to a rotated vector. So we want to modify the position. The center of rotation is this uh, center of mass. So I can connect that here. The axis is the cross product and the angle is this uh, dot product kind of thing. And you can see we do get what should be a perfect fit. Why is that not it? Shouldn't, you know, that's the answer. Uh, no, because your target shape could be heavily deformed from the physics simulation. Imagine that the cylinder actually got a bit distorted. So I'm going to simulate that by just adding a bit of noise and let's do something like that. And to make it even worse, what I can do is I can scale elements. Let's do that on a single axis so that it not only kind of dis is distorted, but it also squashes a little. You're going to see that our kind of rotation thing is doing a pretty good job, but because each rotation is kind of like dependent on the point, you're going to see it's going to distort our cylinder. This isn't what we want. We want the cylinder with one rigid motion rotating to the best fit. Well, this is a very simple fit. Again, this is a job for attribute statistic. Plug this in right here. We want to know the average angle vector. Let's find the average cross product or axis. Center of mass stays the same. Axis is now this and angle is now this. Again, I'm doing the means. What this does is it is a single transformation that doesn't distort our shape, but you can see there's no way this is like the best fit, right? Like there, there is room for improvement, which basically means you want to do the best fit. And then from there, it's going to change kind of what is close to what, and then you have to do it again. So shape matching could be something that is iterative in the many scenarios. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take everything we've done and just kind of throw it in one big soup of a node group shape matching function that only gets us like part of the way there. I'm going to use the repeat zone, throw shape matching in there, make sure everything is hooked up to the same things that it was before. Okay, so this is the same setup we had, but as I repeat this, you're going to see it converges, at least it tries to a better solution. I would say this is a better fit than this was. That's arguable. <laughs> uh, but to make sure that we're not kind of like overshooting and getting this like infinite jiggle, we want to make sure that with each iteration, we get closer and closer and closer. We don't want to do a full rotation, 
but just kind of part of the way. In other words, I can take the angle, average angle that we're rotating by, and multiply it by some factor. So I'm going to connect that here. And this kind of reduces our jitter. We can go even further by making each iteration only do 20%. And now we're basically converging on the best fit. So this is what we had before with full kind of rotation. And then when we let this kind of converge over time, we get uh, something like this. Again, this is something that can be done exactly with a uh, matrix, but this isn't that expensive to compute. If I move the target, it's going to do this. If I rotate it, it's going to find the best fit. If I heavily distort this and kind of skew it and whatever, it's still going to try to find the uh, shape of best fit. So this is a rigid body, but passive. So you can see it's doing all this. And you can see our cylinder, which has maintained its shape, is doing a best fit. And speaking of the shape matching algorithm, actually, that doesn't make any sense. Everybody has a website nowadays, your friend, your daughter, your mom, and it can be pretty complicated if you don't know what you're doing. And Squarespace is a solution to that because they make making websites super easy. Here are three features that Squarespace offers. The first one is analytics, which means you know who is going to your website, which is important if you are trying to make that moolah, which I understand. Squarespace offers all kinds of payment options, Visa, PayPal, anything to, to rake in the cash. Website design kind of boils down to moving around blocks or elements. And if you want to, you can do HTML code injection. I've made multiple websites with Squarespace, but the newest one that, I don't know, I thought was cool, it's text.fan. You, you, you type, it's fun to type. There, there really isn't too much to it. So head over to Squarespace and when you're ready to take your website and launch it, you can use my link in the description to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain.